Hi, hi, Marilyn. Great to see you. Good day. Good day. This is Eddie. Robin. Hello. Robin from the Zero Project in Vienna. Ah, oh, excellent. Lovely to meet you. And then we've got Gregory from Cape Town and Shamila from Cape Town. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet Hello, you. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you guys. Hi, jo hi Justine. Uh, how are you? I'm excellent. Thanks. And good. You? Uh, good to see good, you. Good. Yes, it is, eh? <laughs> hey, guys, we live, eh? Okay. Yeah. So, everyone, I just got word from uh, from the tech team that uh, we are live right now. So, I'd love to take. So I'd love to take this opportunity to thank you all for being here. Welcome to the Zero Project family. We have over 3,400 participants who've joined this year. Um, the, the fortunate thing about the very unfortunate pandemic is that we get to democratize the conversations we have here. So we, we truly have people from all over the world who are tuning in, disability inclusion champions such as yourself. And for us to organize this three-day conference with over 90 hours of, of content on three uh, separate and simultaneous TV channels um, is a big feat, a feat we can only achieve with great partner organizations such as the Living Link. And uh, I really want to take the opportunity to also underscore all the efforts of Stanley and his team um, who have put together this wonderful partner channel session. And I'll leave it at that. I just want to end on one note, which is a big and warm thank you from the entire Zero Project team. Thank you for putting this together. And I personally look forward to a great session. Thank you. Fantastic. Robin, thanks so much for that uh, introduction. I really appreciate it. Um, we've been participants at the Zero Project before, uh, a couple of years ago, where before the crazy pandemic hit the world, we were actually there physically. And uh, it's a really a, a, an honor to be able to present the Living Link in terms of what we do uh, as an organization in South Africa uh, and to present it to everybody who's listening. Um, so thank you so much. And thank you once again for recognizing the Living Link and the work that we do. Um, what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm going to share my screen with you, uh, if you don't mind, as I'm going to be the first speaker and then I'm going to hand over to the other speakers and they will take you through their um, specific topics, which I think you'll find, find quite interesting from a South African perspective in terms of how the Living Link operates and then also from a, um, uh, an employer perspective uh, that we've had a very long standing with and uh, have been very successful in employing people with intellectual disabilities. So let me go to uh, share my screen. Right. Can you all see that? You got it? Clear. Okay, fantastic. Yes, Give me a thumbs up. You can up. see it, yeah. yeah. Okay, fantastic. Okay, great. Has it come up as the slideshow? Okay, great. All right, so just in terms of uh, the Living Link, we are based in uh, South Africa. We are based uh, in two cities, the two largest cities in South Africa, in Johannesburg and in Cape Town. Uh, our details are there on the screen. Uh, as, as this uh, event or this session has been recorded, you will be able to, to get those. Uh, and then, of course, the livinglink.co.za on uh, the web. We are an innovative practice. This is the fourth time we've spoken at the, the, the Zero Project in Austria, albeit from South Africa this time. But just in, I'm going to briefly introduce my speakers to you and I'll let them do their own introduction so that you can gain a little bit more insight in terms of who they are. Um, I will be speaking first. I'll then hand over to Justine Taylor from Johannesburg, who is the employment manager. And then uh, Gregory Simong Fong and Shamila Ownhouse down in the Western Cape in Cape Town. And then uh, Bernan Lambert, who is based at Alexander Forbes in Johannesburg. So um, just in terms of uh, getting things going, I think, you know, uh, the, the topic of employment and intellectually disabled young adults is a very interesting topic because we are continuously looking to break down barriers and enable possibilities for young intellectually disabled uh, um, uh, students or, or, or people out in the community. Um, and uh, uh, it's important to note that we utilize a model of uh, supportive employment to break down these barriers. 
Um, we are very serious about what we do and we are very serious in making an impact in the South African context. Um, we are looking to build bridges because that is how we go about uh, creating these employment opportunities. And we also realize that employment is more than just a job. It's more than just going to work on a daily basis. So, as I said, we embrace uh, uh, the employment pro uh, process by implementing the supported employment model uh, to enable these young intellectually disabled uh, adults to enter the labor market. Um, we believe that they are deserved of real jobs and they are deserved of real pay in those real jobs. Okay. Um, we follow a very rigorous program to get these young adults to this position. So it takes a while, but uh, at the end of it, we are typically very successful in getting our young adults into employment. Um, and what I'm going to do to position the whole uh, Living Link is to take you through a precursor in terms of how we get to that position of employment, because I think it's very important that uh, everybody understand how we get them to be what we call work fit so that they can be successful out in the world of, of, of work. Now, um, the first topic, uh, well, the introduction, uh, the, introduction the, the, the topics that we're gonna uh, chat about are, uh, I'll give you a brief int introduction to the Living Link, how we train for employment. Um, we then go into what we call job sampling, where our practice makes perfect. Um, a little discussion around what support really means um, and how by using common sense, we can make sure that we get our young adults uh, the right kind of employment. A little bit of evidence in terms of uh, our, our employment success rates, and then in, uh, some employment experts uh, insights from our experts in Joburg and in Cape Town. And then if there are any questions or uh, there's further discussion, we'll gladly uh, uh, embrace that. So the Living Link, we are 21 years old this year. We were started in January 2000. Uh, by a mother who has two daughters and one has an intellectual disability. And um, it was a case of when uh, Nadine, who has the intellectual disability, finished all the special needs schools, uh, what, what, what would become of her? Where would she go? And hence, uh, a discussion was started between uh, Ingrid, who is the mom, and um, uh, Julia, who is the daughter who doesn't have the intellectual disability, on how they could support Nadine going forward in terms of becoming more independent and ultimately potentially entering the open labor market. So we've grown and we've adapted over the last 21 years, and we've learned. We've learned to uh, offer best practice training for these intellectually uh, disabled young adults. And I guess uh, it's a case of there will always be lifelong learning. We will never stop learning to enhance our programs to make sure that we can make the most uh, difference to the young adults that come through our doors. As I said, we are located in Joburg and Cape Town. Uh, at equates to anybody who doesn't know South Africa. Uh, we are up in the north in Joburg. Cape Town is down in the southwest. We are probably 1,600 kilometers apart. And... Um, I often say that uh, we, we almost live in different countries because the cultures are so different. So um, our focus, sorry, let me just kill that. Our focus uh, uh, is on training intellectually uh, disabled young adults between the ages of 18 to 35. And over the last 21 years, we have trained in excess of 620 of these adults so far. Now, in terms of the training, so uh, an insight into why we do what we do so that we can be successful in employment um, is, I just want to admit somebody else, uh, is very important to understand because you can't go to employment unless you've had practice. Because if you don't know how to behave, you don't know how to interact, you don't know how to react, you don't know how to communicate, you are not going to hold down a job. So the training is a vital component in getting us to that final destination in the journey where the next steps of your life uh, will take place. So um, we start with an occupational assessment of the young adult because it is vital that we determine if the living link is the right place for the young adult. We don't want to set anybody up for failure. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody who comes through the living link will be successful. Our training is on life skills, independent living skills, but we have an overarching focus on employment. 
because you cannot become more independent unless you have a job because you cannot rent a house, rent a flat, uh, potentially buy your own place or build your own place if you are not employed because there won't be any money. The subjects that our young adults study uh, and we run a one-year course are lifestyle management, personal empowerment, basic budgeting and finance and employment readiness. And that typically takes uh, the first six months of the course. You could almost call it that that is the classroom type training before we go into the practical. However, on saying that, our courses are very practical because we are, are dealing with intellectually disabled young adults who potentially battle to read and write. So their numeracy and written skills can be um, quite basic at times but we don't take that into consideration in terms of the assessments that we do to let them into the course, because you don't have to read and write to be able to work. You can do other jobs, uh, even though you are illiterate or enumerate. We use a blended learning approach where we plug a, um, um, uh, our own material that we've developed over the last 20 years into what in terms of is a South African context, a learnership where at the end of the course, the young adults can actually leave and uh, they can be assessed as competent after gaining uh, 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 120 credits uh, to their name and they leave with a qualification, which uh, in essence should stand them in better stead going forward into the world of, of employment, where as they come out of the special needs schooling system with no real qualification to speak of, we now have the ability to help them, uh, uh, to train them and to have them assessed as competent at the end of the training and have that actual qualification that stands against their name and allows them to go into future positions of employment and uh, uh, build on that to gain other qualifications to build onto their CVs. And ultimately, if they are able to do that, they can then work their way up and through uh, the world of work. Onto better, uh, onto uh, uh, you know, into more responsible and better, better type uh, positions. So that 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 training uh, is quite rigorous. Uh, we expect the the learners to uh, take it home with them. It's not just something that takes place at the Living Link. And then we move into the practical phase, where uh, instead of coming to the Living Link every day, we place those young adults out into what we call job sampling. Now that is the next uh, six months. They go out into various organizations where they do real work with real people. Uh, when I say real people, they add real value. So they're not there to watch supervisors work or co-workers do their work. Um, we have people who uh, are in merchandising, picking and packing. They are in maintenance teams. They do admin work. Uh, they are in logistics. They are in kitchens. Um, they work in uh, the Johannesburg Zoo amongst animals. They are cleaners. So there are a number of places where they work. We send these uh, young adults out who are, are still students of the Living Link, and uh, we give them the opportunity to experience different kinds of work. However, they experience this work uh, alongside one of our job coaches that assists them to navigate this world of work because they are still in the training phase. And this is where we say to our young adults, this is where you have the ability to fail in work. Because once you get out into the world of work, especially in South Africa, the employer is particularly cruel. We have a very high unemployment rate and the employer knows that if the employee is not towing the line, following the rules, doing what is expected of them, they can be replaced quite quickly. So it is this job sampling phase where they have the opportunity to fail, where they have the opportunity to practice so that when they leave our, uh, 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 our training venue, when they go into the world of work, into that open labor market, we know, they know, and their parents know that they can go out there and they can be successful. As I said, we, are, we support those young adults with um, a job coach, and those job coaches help them navigate that, uh, that uh, job sampling environment. But not only that, we support the employee who has taken them on to practice their, their, their work because it is vital that we all form um, a joint role to, to get them through to be successful. Skills learned, merchandising, cleaning and hygiene, administrative uh, skills, logistical, animal care, kitchen support, maintenance, gardening, cleaning, hygiene. Uh, we are not limited in terms of what we expose them to. And at the end of it, the young adults are not limited in terms of where they 
can go to be employed. And that will be explained by uh, 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 the ladies uh, when they have chance to speak. We utilize continuous assessments via KPIs, uh, which are key performance indicators, to coach and mentor our young adults. Um, I do have a shot of that. It's not the biggest, and I do apologize for that. But we ask questions of the supervisors who these young adults are working with to ensure that we can pick up in that job sampling environment exactly where the weaknesses are so that those weaknesses can be overcome. It is not um, a whipping tool. This is a developmental tool. This tool helps us iron out the problems prior to employment. So things like personal appearance, are they punctual? Do they get to work on time every day? People skills, the interaction that the young adult has with his peers and the supervisors and managers in the, the job sampling environment. How competent is that student to do that job? The repetition, are they able to do repetitive work? Are they dependent, independent um, in terms of working alongside uh, supervisors and peers? Productivity in terms of what is required of them to do the jobs. For example, if you are a merchandiser and you have a certain amount of uh, uh, bottles to pack into a fridge, what, how productive are you in terms of merchandising that fridge pr uh, 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 productively against somebody who doesn't have a disability in the same environment? And then, of course, you know, the overall satisfaction and any comments that uh, uh, the employer can make, we take that, we utilize that, and we, we grow and develop the, the young adults going forward. And it's quite interesting, uh, this um, set of KPIs that we use, because often when we get into the world of employment, uh, the employer requests reporting mechanisms from us. It's almost a proof to say that uh, this person that you are, uh, that is entering into our space of work is competent and has been assessed and coached to get to a level where they will add real value. So what does the support really mean? Um, it's quite interesting because, um, uh, you know, we, we do pre-vocational uh, training um, and uh, once the, 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 the student has been completed in terms of, has completed the course in terms of their, their training and the job sampling, we then register them onto our database. And that is where we then look to uh, um, place them in some kind of employment out into uh, the, the, the open labor market. Um, now, in terms of the placement, we are not seagulls. We don't drop and run. There's quite a lot that goes into it. And again, the, the job coaches will explain. Um, but we often have to do analysis. We often have to do observations. Um, we go in, we sensitize the workplace to make sure they understand the individual, to under, help them understand how uh, they can support and interact with the young disabled adult that is entering into their environment. Because we find a lot of times uh, the employees where our students or our graduates are going to go and work, uh, they have never been associated with people with disabilities or they, they don't know the appropriate behaviors. Uh, they're appropriate, not, our, not the disabled person, uh, uh, the employee, in terms of interacting with a person with a disability, whether it's a, um, uh, an intellectual disability or a physical disability or any other type of disability. We often spend time um, when the young adults start their first day helping them understand their contract uh, so that they understand what they're signing that they're not signing their life away, that they understand, for example, if uh, there's deductions from the salary, what those deductions are from a, um, a legislative point of view in terms of tax. Perhaps they get a pension or a provident fund, or uh, they might even be lucky enough in larger organizations to have a, a medical aid that they can contribute to in terms of looking after their health if something does happen to them. So employment doesn't have to be... Um, Complicated. If we use the common sense approach, if we use a step by by step approach, um, we can we can be very successful in terms of where we place our young adults. Um, we take the reporting, the KPIs that we have gained throughout their job sampling, and we utilize that in terms of the placements. We never place somebody in a job where they don't have ability because we don't want any company just to employ for the sake of employment, to be feeling sorry for one of our uh, uh, graduates. They need to go in, they need to add real value, and they need to do a real job and be compensated. 
So each one of our graduates, we do a person-centered plan with them and we understand their capabilities, they understand their capabilities and we match according to where we place them. So it's an individualized um, process in terms of making sure that each placement can be very successful. We not only place within those uh, specific uh, employment environments, but what we also look to do is to change society as a whole, to say to businesses out there, yes, the people that come from the Living Link have an intellectual disability. Yes, they are disabled to some extent, but they add value, they are competent, they are loyal, and they are assets to your businesses. This is why you need to employ those young adults and other people with other disabilities. And just to touch on uh, the different types of uh, employment opportunities that uh, we create, we look at permanent uh, contracts of employment, part-time is contract work where there's starts and end dates. We have learnerships in South Africa where typically it is funded by a sectorial education authority, uh, like the cleaning and hygiene learnership that we run here, that enhances their skills uh, and they get real work experience to take them forward. And then the idea is hopefully at the end of that, the company where they've uh, done that, that work embraces them and takes them on, uh, on a permanent basis. And then we have our gap skills development program where we are sponsored money from a corporate. We utilize that money to pay stipends where the young adult can at least go out and continue gathering uh, or gaining experience, which adds to their CV, which then makes them more, uh, um, uh, it gives them more availability in terms of future employment opportunities that come. But we don't like our young adults once they finish the job sampling and the training to go home and sit. So we, had, we advise them to go into volunteering uh, uh, positions because a lot of the time when they do that, they actually go out and uh, that volunteer where they volunteered can typically take them on and make them permanent employees with their environment. And just some anecdotal in, uh, evidence I'd like to share with you. Uh, at the, I'm, I'm not gonna share with you what happened in 20, uh, 2020 because everybody knows what happened with uh, COVID. It decimated employment in South Africa, um, which is extremely sad because we were going along quite nicely. But at the 20, end of 2019, um, 68 employment opportunities were sourced, 62 by the Living Link itself, six people found their own jobs, and there were 51 paid contracts. Uh, we like to lean quite heavily on our networks uh, in terms of supporting us, but it just proves what the possibilities are when the economic situation um, is more robust and more stable, uh, with the right support, with the right insights, we are able to go in and make a difference. Then in conclusion, I'd like to leave you with this from Nelson Mandela. It always seems impossible until it is done. Nothing is impossible. And we are continuously looking to break down barriers and create opportunities for our young adults who have these intellectual disabilities. I'm going to uh, unshare my screen now, and uh, I'm going to uh, hand over to Justine, and uh, she is going to uh, uh, take you through um, her insights from a Joburg point of view in terms of what she has experienced uh, uh, as the employment manager in Joburg. Hi everyone, it's really, really great to be here to share our vision and to have this platform available despite a crazy circumstance. So it's really good to, to see you. Can you all hear me perfectly well? All right. So I, uh, my background, I have a degree in social work with a major in psychology. And I actually started off in the psychiatric field. So that is my sort of forefront. Uh, that lead, led me to an interest in um, not just a psychiatric uh, disability field, um, but developmental disabilities in general. And I'm here now. And, and really, really grateful and enjoying the kind of work that I do. It's, it's greatly rewarding. Um, and I think to be able to have a job that is, is re as rewarding as this is, um, it's, it's, it's rare. So my main role as the employment manager is to match our graduates 
according to their strengths and weaknesses and their capabilities. And remember that goes in accordance to what is stipulated in their KPIs through job sampling. So I go through all of those KPIs, I look at their training reports and I gather that information and I try my best to match these graduates with a suitable job position. And like Stanley said, we don't want our, our students to go into a certain job position where they are not skilled or challenges have arisen for them in a specific field when it came to job sampling. We want our guys and ladies to succeed. So I gather that information, I make um, as best a, an assessment as possible for fitting them into some kind of job position. And I offer ongoing support to them once that placement is made. So my main role is twofold. It's firstly placement. So sourcing new job opportunities in relation to the students or the graduates capacities, as well as retention, because we don't want our students just to be placed. We want them to be successful. We want them to retain their job. That is the main aim. So if I were to sum up my job role, those are the two main, main aspects. And Stanley, thanks Stanley, you've, you've covered the, or what support means, what, what kind of um, roles we, we encounter with support. So that is like Stanley said, disability sensitization for new colleagues of our graduates, as well as job coaching I've mentioned, that's the ongoing job placement once um, the person has a job. But even pre-placement, we're looking at compiling CVs, interview practice and role play. And Stanley mentioned a understanding of their contract so they know what they are getting themselves into. As well as encouraging them to feel assertive enough to speak up about any challenges or issues that they might face. You know, if they find something in their contract that they are not sure of or that they quite frankly do not like, then we work together and we address that with the company in a way that is professional. So firstly, placement to find new work opportunities. So as Stanley mentioned, we like to rely on our existing networks and we like to build on those. So we might have had two graduates start working at a certain company. And if there is some level of success, I would like to, to utilize that. So you guys at this company have seen that our graduates work well. Would there be any room for, for expanding, maybe bringing one other graduate in? And part of that would be me going to the company and conducting a job analysis. So finding a position that would be suited for our graduates. And sometimes the companies don't know what position our graduates could fill. So that is also part of my job is saying, okay, lay out the kind of work that you do, lay out where there is a huge demand and give me the information as to where or what department certain end goals are not being reached. And let's get our guys and ladies in there and helping with, with what they can. And of course, the positions are entry level and to some extent a repetitive type work, but you must, we must all remember that for our guys and ladies, if they can master the job that they are doing, it gives them a great sense of confidence and willingness to, to really want to succeed. So that's relying on existing relationships. And when we try and open up new placements, that's obviously a, a, um, another aspect of, of the job that I do. So facilitating new relationships with new companies. So that is developing new job positions from companies that may not have ever heard about the Living Link. So that in itself can be daunting because that involves giving them information about not only about what we do at the Living Link, but what can a person or persons with an intellectual disability do for them. And at the end of the day, we don't just want companies to be a placement for our graduates. We want them to add value. And of course, along with 
finding new placements and, and facilitating new opportunities, you're going to find challenges, as, as you could probably imagine. And I can speak at length about the challenges, but I can speak at length about the successes as well. Um, but let me focus firstly on the challenges that, that I've encountered. And I've been an employment manager at the link. This would have been my fourth year. Um, so I, I've seen a, quite a few, few challenges al along the way. So I'd say one of the most common is I see companies who are relatively risk averse. And again, you can understand that, um, but risk averse around what is this employing a person with a disability? What is it gonna cost us? What resources do we need? What is this term called reasonable accommodation? What does that mean? What, what is reasonable enough for that company to offer? How do we engage with a person with an intellectual disability? And how can we protect ourselves against any wrongdoing against a person with an intellectual disability? So all of those lump into a sense of being very averse to, to that risk, because at the end of the day, they are jumping into something that is the unknown. So I really, I, I've been able to anticipate the questions that I might encounter when I try and facilitate new working relationships. And I try to be proactive enough to answer these questions before they ask me. But risk aversion is, is, is one huge challenge. Another one would be the lack of understanding around what an intellectual disability mean. And it is, it is interesting for me to, to be able to facilitate the understanding of what an intellectual disability means. It is not someone who is unable to work. It is not someone who should be sitting at home, not adding any value. These guys and ladies can in fact work and add great value. We just need to know where their skills and strengths lie and where their weaknesses lie and we work with that. So, Along with this lack of understanding, of course, we will hear it a lot, is the stigma around an intellectual disability. And um, quite frankly, that goes for, for anything that, that, that is different to, to the norm. And I always do this when I say the norm, because what is, what is normal? Um, but a stigma around these, these, these guys and ladies not being able, just being in, incapable. Um, so I really like to, 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 to try and put that to rest, at least bring some awareness out there. And another huge, huge challenge I encounter, obviously, is the economic climate at the time. So as Stanley mentioned, COVID has just completely knocked employment opportunities and the economic uh, climate within South Africa. But even without COVID, it is tough to find new work opportunities in, in South Africa. Um, and it comes down to the economic climate is the decider of whether or not companies have the economic resources to be able to power someone with an intellectual disability. Um, so that, that can really, really be a, a, a huge challenge. And I'd say the last challenge, I've not, it's not an exhaustive list, but one of the last challenges I thought I would speak about um, is when I might encounter a company that would like to employ one of our graduates with an intellectual disability. So they feel comfortable with where the person's going to be placed, what job role they will perform, and they like, they like the, the program, they like where it's going. However, not all of the companies who are keen for this buy into the ongoing job coaching, which is the ongoing support. Uh, and not all of them are very interested to have me come and conduct a disability sensitization to them and their, their colleagues. So in that regard, we, we do tread lightly um, if that is to come up, because of course we we do, we do value the, the employment opportunity, but we are wary if a company is not uh, overly keen to, to, to buy into that, to completely buy into the, the, the supportive model that we advocate. So 
those are some of the main challenges and and obviously the the platform is open to to Shamila who's who's obviously witnessed a lot of or experienced a lot of opportunities as well um and I think the Johannesburg and the Cape Town office differs quite a lot in terms of their own experiences but of course successes come with the challenges as with everything in life um so two successes that stick out greatly for me over the years would be a lady who graduated a few years ago she actually started off at Alex Forbes she was purely replenishing stock like teas and coffees she was helping keeping the the area clean and tidy and really starting at an entry-level position at this company and within a couple of years, she had moved up, moved her way up with the help of Alexander Forbes. So they really bought into the skills development um, that we also like to advocate for our graduates. They assisted this, this graduate with seeing her skills and seeing her capabilities and utilizing that and, and realizing that, hang on, we've, we've got a young lady who's capable and extremely proficient with the work she's doing, but we can utilize her in a greater capacity. She is now, I believe, welcoming works in a position. She works at welcoming new guests to Alex Forbes. And she's basically the front line of Alex Forbes, which is, which is really, really, uh, uh, it's, it's greatly rewarding. So, that is just one success story out of the Benny, and I could talk on and on and on about the, the successes, but I'd like to wrap things up, and I believe Shamila is going to add to, to anything I've already said. Yeah, and uh, also from a Cape Town perspective in terms of how they find the employment and support of intellectually disabled uh, young adults down there. So over to you guys in Cape Town. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, my name is Gregory Simongkong, and I have a background in PR and marketing and worked in corporate uh, for many years and uh, joined the nonprofit sector in 2012 as a fundraiser. And in 2015, joined a special care center as a fundraiser slash PR. Um, and this was a residential facility for individuals with profound intellectual disabilities um, and it is here that I learned about the stigma still attached to disability and in particularly intellectual disabilities. And in 2018, I started managing the Cape Town branch of the Living Link. And uh, as you um, can hear, I mean, our main, our main aim is to integrate individuals with uh, mild intellectual disabilities into the open labor market. Um, so from a Cape Town point of view, you know, just um, we found that employment for persons with, a, uh, with disabilities had been challenging even before COVID-19. And I think just from a, a South African context, just in general, employment was already quite, quite challenging. Um, and it was evident that employing persons with disabilities um, was sometimes furthest thing on the minds of, of, of companies. Um, and instead of exploring ways to recruit and to integrate uh, disabled people into the company, it was far easier to say, oh, you know, well, it's, it's not possible, we don't know how to do it. Or what we came to, or what my experience has been is that, um, you know, it, it is easier to see, um, you know, that, that there was accommodation made for people with a physical disability. Um, and so therefore, you know, recruiting somebody with an intellectual disability, there wasn't, it's not necessarily seen. And that was always a challenge. Uh, and speaking to, to human resources uh, individuals, um, in actual fact, just quite recently, the past two days, uh, myself and Shamila had a meeting with one of the big retailers here in Cape Town. And even then, you know, it, it was a matter of there was apprehension around uh, uh, working with people with uh, intellectual disabilities specifically. And I think uh, Justine mentioned this as well, is that they're not sure if they're going to be doing the right thing and they just don't know how to do it. Uh, I've, I've actually had an HR person say to me that they would really love to do it, but they just don't know how. 
And, uh, you know, that's obviously where we would come in and we would just say, like, okay, let us assist you in, in, in supporting people with disabilities in the workplace. Um, and so at the Living Link, especially in Cape Town, we try to get, uh, you know, the, the companies to understand that and to get a deeper understanding of how to create this inclusive society with persons with disability in the workplace. Um, because we know that uh, that in, in South Africa, in the South African context, people with uh, disabilities are amongst the most marginalized group in South Africa. And although they make up 7.5% uh, of our population, they unfortunately still only hold about 1% of the jobs in the country. And uh, this situation is further exacerbated by socioeconomic factors, um, leaving people with, uh, with disabilities and particularly people with intellectual disabilities dependent on uh, uh, what we would call our grant system and also trapped in poverty. And um, I think, you know, well, I, I can't speak for Johannesburg, but especially here in Cape Town, we would find that a person with an intellectual disability um, would most likely be in, uh, you know, in, in that uh, trapped in that, in that poverty cycle. Um, you know, they, they would find themselves in that uh, lower LSMs, um, you know, just from because of, of the intellectual disabilities. Um, and as for companies, we try to encourage them to, to understand that creating this inclusive corporate culture, um, they would be seen as holding the interests of their staff firstly, and, and recognizing uh, and be recognized as a social, socially responsible employer. Because what, uh, what we, one of our parents, or not sorry, parents, one of the guardians of one of our, of our trainees, he was actually the, the, the oldest brother of one of our trainees. And he worked for one of the bigger banks here in South Africa. And he said that, you know, he, he when, when he joined, or at least when his brother joined the Living Link, and he started mentioning this in his department, all of a sudden, you know, people were saying, but I've got a, a young uh, a cousin or I've got a, 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 um, a, a nephew or, or even, you know what, my son has an intellectual disability and I've got no idea what I'm going to do when they leave their special needs school. And so when companies start to, to look at a, a, uh, becoming more inclusive, it's not just about employing somebody with, with disabilities, but I, I think their staff also appreciate it because they realize that the company is trying to do something that could affect them as well. Um, and then also, you know, we, 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 we definitely, I mean, especially in Cape Town, we, 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 we emphasize the fact that uh, for companies here in South Africa, there's also the national legislation in terms of employment equity, broad-based black economic empowerment, and corporate social responsibility, um, and, and they can benefit from, from these, okay? Um, we know that if an employee, an employer um, should send staff to study further, um, the companies benefit um, by gaining points on the, this, uh, uh, you know, employment equity scorecard, um, as well as uh, skills development. So in addition, you know, when they uh, employ somebody with, a, uh, with a, a, an intellectual disability or with a disability, it just means that they receive further tax rebates. And this is something that we've used um, in Cape Town, you know, just reminding companies, um, you know, that first of all, there is legislation that is in place that uh, requires them to employ people with intellectual disabilities and that, and that they need to make a reasonable co accommodation. Um, but at the same time, that there is benefits, because I think in most cases, companies always look at the benefits. And I think Justine mentioned that as well, is that, you know, uh, what is the bottom line? How, how is it going to affect the bottom line? Um, even although I must say that the, 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 the persons that we've dealt with in Cape Town, it's generally the, the human resources person. Um, the, it's not really about the bottom line, but, I really, but it's oftentimes about communicating um, how, can, how can they do it. Because like I said, many times they said, we don't know how to do it. Um, so, but with all this in place, we still, are, are, we have challenges with, with opportunities for people with disabilities. And I think I, I want to call Shamila at this point in time, just to talk about specifically Cape Town and how Cape Town is affected 
um, because uh, Shamila has been working um, as an employment consultant for the past two, two and a half years almost. And so she was, you know, she was in, engaged in some really amazing stuff uh, or opportunities that were about to, to sort of, we were hoping were going to come to, into fruition in, in, in last year. And unfortunately, as we all have, have noticed, uh, or have all have said that because of, of the, the pandemic, that uh, you know, a lot of those things unfortunately fell by the wayside. So I'm going to ask uh, mm -hmm. Sharmila now to come in and, and just uh, share her experiences with regards to employment here in Cape Town. Gregory, sorry, Sharmila, uh, can I ask a favor? I've just uh, seen a message come up from uh, Zero Project, just in terms of our timing. Do you mind if we go to Verilyn first and then come back to you, Sharmila? Is that okay? Thanks, Verilyn. I think let's go to you just in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the timing and then we'll finish off with Shamila. Thank you. Thank you uh, for that, Stanley. Thank you very much for uh, including me on this platform. Uh, just to share my experience uh, with working with uh, young adults with disabilities. Um, just, just a brief background. I'm in Alexander Forbes. Uh, my designation there is facilities manager uh, in charge of soft services, which is all our uh, employee value proposition. So anything to do with what, the, what enhances the employee's uh, um, situation at work, that's one of the things I'm involved in. I've been involved with people with disabilities since um, 1993, but in various different sectors with people with uh, blind and deaf and people with epilepsy. And um, in 2015 uh, was my first experience with young adults with intellectual disabilities. Uh, we were introduced to the Living Link uh, April 2015, um, and we embarked on a partnership uh, with Living Link to bring uh, some of the young adults across to um, be employed by Alexander Forbes. This was supposed to be a temporary arrangement, and um, we tried to sensitize staff, as Justine has alluded to, and we included them on our executive floor, which was a bit of a gamble because we entertain and we, we uh, receive a high profile guests and also on one of the busiest floors just to understand uh, what this would play out to to be. Uh, this project was supposed to be a two month project. It was extremely successful and Alexander Forbes then embarked on something more uh, permanent, should I say. Uh, it, it wasn't really a permanent employment that we could uh, afford the young adults, but we looked at uh, various models. Uh, at that particular point in time, we approached uh, INCETA, which is the South African uh, Insurance Sector Education and Training Authority, and they agreed to fu uh, fund uh, 15 of the young adults to have a contract for one year with Alexander Forbes. Um, and these young adults were then trained to work in our refreshment areas. Uh, they served and managed our pause areas and kitchens. Uh, this was really something that was positively received by most of the employees at Alexander Forbes. And not only was it a, a different look and feel to our pause areas, which was now uh, manned by a, a human being that was able to uh, communicate with some of the staff and and they had interactions and it turned out to be such a positive uh, fixture in our, our pause areas that not only was our pause areas a pleasant place to go into but we also then achieved savings from having these young adults just being a presence in this area. Uh, after the first year of INCETA funding we approached them again and they fortunately said to us they could do seven young adults that they could fund for the, 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 the next period. And because of the savings and the, the positivity that we'd achieved in the previous year, Alexander Forbes was then able to uh, contract with the seven other uh, candidates. And we still had 14 candidates on site uh, at Alexander Forbes for a further year. Due to the South African labor law, after that year, we weren't able to extend the contract for the young adults, uh, but we had to go through the living link and then be part of their GAP program. And that way we were able to then uh, retain seven of the, the young adults to be on, on, on site with us. Uh, 
you know, during this period, we met lots of young adults because we weren't able to to use the same group. We had to 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 change uh, people, young adults from from the Living Link, and and we we went through quite a quite a few um, of 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 the trainee uh, uh, people that had, had left uh, graduated from the the Living Link uh, program. Uh, after after this, the the, the third period of of, of uh, partnering with Living Link, Alexander Forbes then decided that we would employ, fully employ uh, seven of the young adults that we had grown with over the past three years. And um, in November 2018, this was realized and seven of the young adults were employed at Alexander Forbes just as a normal staff member with full staff benefits, which was something that we were really proud of. Uh, and they were integrated so well into the environment that they added extreme value. And as Justine had alluded to, the, the one young lady that she speaks of is we are so proud to have had her in that frontline position because as, as Justine says, she welcomes some of our uh, guests that come and see our CEO, some, some high profile guests. And she's been such a positive impact in that area that uh, it, it, we, we are very proud of that achievement. Uh, also during the period that um, we've partnered with uh, the Living Link, we've also had some job samplers that have come through our environment from time to time and they've done some, some, some uh, job sampling on our site. And our relationship and our partnership with Living Link has grown from strength to strength. And uh, I'm proud to say that even during the COVID pandemic, um, it, it became very difficult to justify why we would have uh, staff on site that weren't able to work because we obviously had to close down our refreshment stations due to all the touch points and there were lots of um, hygiene protocols that needed to be put in place. But we, we tried to partner with HR and we spoke to some of the other business partners and we were able to repurpose the young adults that are at Alexander Forbes and they are now uh, in our mail room. They now do hygiene protocols. Uh, they, they, they do so many other different things and we've managed to retain the employment status of these young adults. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to do any job sampling uh, during the 2020 period. And, uh, you know, hopefully when things do return to some semblance of normality, uh, our relationship and our partnership with Living Link can still continue um, to grow from strength to strength. Thanks, Stanley. Marilyn, that's fantastic. And thanks to you for the intricate role that you play in uh, supporting those young adults. Because if it wasn't for you, this project wouldn't have uh, had the legs that it's had over the years and been as dynamic as, as it is. And I know those young adults look to you for so much support, but you're more than just a mentor and a coach. You, 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 you are somebody that they can confide in and they, that they can trust. So thank you for, for the support that you offer them and, and for going the extra, extra, extra mile that you do. Uh, Shamila, we have three minutes for you yeah. before uh, we, we have to cut off, but uh, I'm going to let you finish off from your perspectives from Cape Town. So thank you. Thank you, Stanley. Thank you, Stanley. I think that you've given me the shortest time, but it's okay. We will we will see you to that another time. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shamla Ownhaus, and I am the employment consultant for the Living Link in Cape Town. My background is occupational therapy. I started off uh, in occupational therapy many years ago but I soon moved over into job coaching um, and support and employment is such an alive kind of an activity to do. And there's so much that needs to be done that I find that um, it's extremely stimulating to be part of that team of uh, employing people or getting people in line with um, employment, young people with disability. Um, and I, I, I wanna say thank you to V because there are so many other companies that would love to actually use that same approach uh, to make it so much easier for uh, our young adults to be part of it because um, the, 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 the challenges that we face is that uh, firstly, there's a lot of stigma attached to everything. Um, but the, 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 the one thing I wanna leave uh, today with, uh, and that is most probably just 
um, the experience how what young people with disability feel is such an empowering thing for them to be part of societies, contributing to their family. And as our team at The Living Link, we are, a job coach is not just a job coach, it's a life coach, it's the doctor, it's the nurse, it's the mother, it's the father, it is everything that we have to do. And um, at the end of the day, um, we are the part in, um, mentoring our young adults to be successful in this, in this, in this journey and this dream that they want to be part of. Um, and um, once this is, once they see this type of um, connection or they see this type of partnership, you can just imagine that you have a sustainable young adult um, employed. Um, and the, it, it just helps the rest of the family. And we can bring a lot of our young adults with disabilities and their families out of the poverty that they are in um, by doing this type of uh, constant um, looking after and mentoring. And so I think that the Living Links team, um, I don't want to actually, I don't really have much time to say much, but I do think that we have already covered so much. Um, my part as the job coach is to see that somebody is sustainable in the job. And um, with everything that we are going through, we have a lot of trainees um, that are experiencing a lot of frustration. Everybody's going through their own uh, mental testing. Even uh, we ourselves are going through a lot of mental testing and they are still coming out on top. They're still pushing through and they're still um, meeting the targets, the KPIs from the workplaces. Um, I experience this on a daily basis. Um, with Even with COVID challenges, we do see that uh, they adhere to all of the COVID challenges and they still uh, meet the, the, the outcomes of those companies. Um, and the feedback that I get from um, supervisors and managers is that um, people with intellectual disability are so flexible. They are versatile, they are able to be trained and they are able to fit in um, to whatever situation is. And if they do struggle, it means that it maybe it was too much information that they needed to deal with. So it needs a more of a one step, two step activities before they can get back onto, onto the, the right path. So thank you to everyone that you've actually contributed. My contribution is that I want that I think that job coaching is vital in every company to see that you work alongside a supervisor, manager, and the trainee or the for the job sampling to work well. So thank you. Jamila, thank you. And uh, I apologize for uh, asking you to cut yours. I owe you. So when I'm in Cape Town, expect a lunch. But uh, ladies uh, and gents, thanks so much for your input. We really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm hoping that there was a bit of an audience uh, at the Zero Project and uh, that people did get an insight into uh, supported employment from a living link perspective and how we go about that. Marilyn, thank you for coming on board and being a spokesperson uh, from Alexander Forbes and such a support for uh, the living link and the young adults who are um, employed in your organization and for supporting them um uh, uh, on a continuous basis uh robin thanks for the opportunity i'm not sure if you're going to pop in right now and to the whole zero project it's been a great uh two or three days and uh we wish you luck and look forward to hearing from you soon <laughs>